Hello and welcome to another episode of I'd Watch That with me, Ash Frith, and a guest. Don't worry about that. There is going to be a guest there where if you don't know, what happens is I've took the hundred top films from IMDb. I split them up into their words, put them into a randomizer. I then press a button and the fantastic piece of software that my friend designed for me spits out two words at random. We create a film and hopefully with the help of the guest, we make a film that you will say, you, the viewer, will say, I'd watch that. Now, this week's guest is one of my favourite guests I've ever had on the podcast. It's the only, it went so well last time. I've got him to come back as, um, just because his ideas were so good and his internet was so clear, I've basically thought to myself, with quality internet like that, we've got to get him back on. So with, with without further ado, please welcome Dan from Anatomical Bomb. Dan, can you hear me? Yes, I can. And viewer, can you see Dan? That's key. That's key. It's so clear, Dan. It's like you were taking oh, the no. piss last time. <laughs> Well, it was the internet was getting up up to about three hundred meg or something. Yeah, that very night. And then, but when you checked it, it was at twelve. Do you remember? Yeah, it was. I'll check 12. it now. Yeah, yeah. Let's do a quick check. Why not? We've got time. Hello, viewers. Thank you for being there. Very much appreciated. Um, and if you're, the, um, if this sorry, is it's the upload you want to worry about. Well, is it the upload? upload? Is it the upload? Yeah, the download's private. Uh, people are saying yes, we can. What a hottie. I can hear Dan and I can see. and So again, there's a lot of people watching that haven't watched before. I need to point out some of my own faults. You've got to be a big, big enough person to admit you've got faults. I'm terrible at reading chat. I'm terrible at reading names. I'll sometimes just drop in on a conversation you're having with someone else on chat. That's one of the things I like to do. I will just sort of say... Uh, I'll read part of the section and then everyone just goes, what the fuck are you talking about? I'll read chat from 25 minutes ago. What are my other yeah. problems, Dan? What are the other things? Uh, well, wrong? when you read the chat, you make everyone sound like they're an idiot. <laughs> what is that that I do? You've complained about that before. I'll give you an example, right? Nuke of the Nuke says, I can see and hear Dan very clearly. <laughs> I can't help it. <laughs> my, my upload is 33, by the way. 33? 33. What kind of Stella. website did you use for that? piece of information virgins <laughs> virgins is that should i just type in but let me just type in virgins yeah, type, type virgins into google it got. i mean i could do it on my phone oh that's not the same nice t-shirt says nuka the nuke nook yeah, nook of the nook i bought this it wasn't a freebie i paid for that just you know but that's because dan has Ooh. subscribed to this channel before and i felt guilty because i didn't subscribe i don't to think i've subscribed enough to pay off that t-shirt it's they're very expensive what i will say is they're so expensive yeah, for what they are good quality though <laughs> i'm joking it was actually very reasonable and really nice quality i don't know why i'm holding my tits like this that's how i i think well that's 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 the, the support that you get with uh I feel an like I'm not really selling it properly. I should lift myself like this a little bit so you can see it. Or should my camera be slightly higher? Or should I be further no, away? We wouldn't see the top of your head. That's I mean, you, you could tilt the camera down a little bit. Into my crotch. It's up to you. I you mean, always say to... that. Why, when you're on a streaming webcam, do you always say, can you tilt the camera down slightly lower? Because <laughs> it's, it's standard, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> um. Are you wearing trousers this time? Are you? I'm wearing. I'm not fully dressed because I was at work. So this is like as dressed as I ever get. Wow! Look! Look how that physique. There. What's going on there? Oh, I don't like that. I don't like that. That's when you're firing a bow and into you... a well. <laughs> What's in the well? Goblins. Goblins. What's your tattoo? I'd never even noticed you had a tattoo before. It's um, Radiohead. My ex very first proper girlfriend paid for this cost her 50 quid she got ripped off and why did she pay for it to be on you was i don't it, know was it a bet i i like radiohead that's, oh, i wanted you. that okay. tattoo right, that's good but it's know. a really bad one it's like a prison turn i'm turning my head sideways look at it that no, looks all right it's weird well, because, i mean yeah, that... you look close and it's, it's bad 
Why was that their sort of logo constantly, or did they just use it once and then forget about it? No, the band has their own artist. I can't remember his name, but he does art for every album, so it just keeps changing. But it was just one that stood out to me. Plus the uh, the the cellmate couldn't really do words. Yeah, he so. just had a a pe- a needle on a ruler. Yeah. Is that the thing where they twang the ruler? Yeah, we we, we did plan to do the whole arm, but yeah, it's taken forever. He passed out four times because of the pain. <laughs> well, this is how it goes, basically. We're basically halfway through the podcast, this isn't it? Um, so as I say, you know the four. It's a good idea, isn't it? It is a good idea. Is, I'm it sure is. it is it a is. good idea. We create movies. And last time, you had some crackers last time. Do you remember what any of them were? I wonder if I've got them down on a piece of paper here. Have I written any of them down for you? I remember there was a few soap stars in there, or soap so stars. So you of had the past. last time. You're the first re- re- returning guest. I should just say. Yeah, well, that didn't really count, did it? I was a robot half of the bloody. The street. signal. Let me know in the chat if you saw the original one. It's still got loads of really positive comments. The people that could wade through the audio issues. Apart um, from your mother saying he's angry. My mum, <laughs> who might well be watching now, said, "Oh, that guy you had on. He was. He was um, a bit it's mean." A mean. He was mean. mean. Yeah. I said, oh, no, he was joking, Mum. <laughs> I'm not mean. Are you not mean? Frisch. You're nice. Frisch. Frisch. Mrs. Frisch. Why well, you call Mrs. Frisch? Mrs. <laughs> <laughs> Mrs. Frisch? The Frisch maker. It's weird. She has got a different name to me. That is strange. Yeah. Um, if my name, if my surname was Frisch, I think I would change it to Frith. Just to make it. Would you? Oh, what's wrong with Frisch? You could oh, be like... Frisch is frisch. One, frisch. 100% Frisch is a cleaning product. The Frisch Prince of South End. Oh. She didn't like that. Did you hear her? <laughs> what is that? That was a, a home smart speaker that whose name shall remain unsaid. <laughs> Just popped in because I said Frisch. No, nothing. Um, Fizzbin UK said I saw it. No one else watched it. So we should be fine. No one else. No one else. Sorry. Some of those did. Um, Sam the King says, uh, "Chapmas answer to Stavros Flatley." Chapman's answer to Stavros Flatley. Chapman's think, answer to well, Stavros. He's saying is he saying I'm this, fat? this is an example of you making everyone sound stupid again. Go on. He's, uh, I think I think Sam the King is saying Chatham, but um, I just want to pull you up on a few points. But he says Chapman's. Um, I know. I know. So would you uh, read that I, as Chatham? I don't live in Chatham. I don't live in Chatham. Would you There's say Chatham, Chatham or would you c- c- call it as it was and no, say Chatham? It, it, it is Chatman's, yeah, but you don't need to be so patronising. Yeah, but what would you say if you were reading that? I would have figured it out. My brain works independently from my mouth. Oh, I can't do that. Chatman's <laughs> answer to Stavros Flatley. I met Stavros Flatley. They're fully grown Did adult you? men. It's weird. Am I both of them? No, I'm one of the fat ones. So look, look at me. <laughs> Oh, yeah, I'm the young one who uh, got in shape. Did he get in shape? And, uh, I saw him, he wasn't in shape. He did. He got in shape, and uh, they become unfunny suddenly overnight. Because, I mean, they were... You've got Richard Pryor, you've got Mickey Flanagan, you've got Stavros Flatley for the level of humour, haven't you? Mm, yeah. Absolutely banging. Uh, so, yeah, you had Demolition Recall, Beverly Hills Tie, Service Chapter 2, <laughs> Cop Weapon... And Leon's Secret last time. Good ones. Nothing. I remember uh, the Destruction Recall. Tom Hanks and Meg Ryan's the next vehicle. Oh, yeah, that was great. It was a really great one. Well, should we get into it? Should we get you? Should we get your first film cracking on yeah. now? Well, that's not a sentence. So here we go. We're going over live to the randomizer. Can you see that, Dan? It's tiny for me, but I can see it. I've said that before when I've tilted the camera <laughs> down. It's a penis joke for you. Um, right, okay, so we're going to press the button now. You're going to get your first. And, viewer, this is improvised. Dan has not seen any of the... I know it's going to seem like he's prepared all of this information. Not even seen a film. Never seen a film. Well, that is where I come at it from. I went to a wedding the other day with a lot of um, filmy p- people. And uh, constantly they were saying a film and going, yeah, it's like in The Thing where this thing happens, isn't it? And I'd go, I don't I don't know. And they'd say, oh, OK, well, it's like, you know, when John Smurge was in that film and then he changed his appearance completely. For, and I'd go, I don't know. I don't know anything about that. And then, and then you decide to do a film based 
game yeah. show on well, Twitch, you, yeah. You can't help the ideas that you have, can you? That's the problem. <laughs> you can't help the wonderful ideas that you come up with. Um, okay, well, here we go. I've got these sounds, which I don't know if everyone can hear. Aww. That one says R, and um, this one is a heartbeat sound. That's all I've got. I don't know why I chose those sounds. This one here says selected. Yeah. It's a picture of rocket. What happens if I press that? I heard them. I muted the stream. I could hear them. Oh, it's boom. It's a boom sound. Anyway, are we ready for our first movie? Yes. I mean, if we're not, it's still going to happen, isn't it? So here we go. Rambo Mission as your first. I mean, that's that's good because that, I mean, it lends itself to the possibility. This could genuinely be a film because he's not finished making Rambo films, has he? Definitely. It's a bit on the nose, isn't it? It it's doesn't matter. You do, yeah, you do whatever you want. That's it. I'm just saying it could be. It's like, I'm not here to tell you what you think this is. You're the one who's going to tell me what you think it is. I'm just saying, if it is a Rambo film, I can imagine that is something that would happen. There's a son of Rambo as well, isn't there? That's kind of like yeah, but a that, kid wanting to be Rambo. Yeah, it's not based on... That's not... Oh, Articus straight away says Rambo becomes a missionary. I mean, so it's not on the nose, Dan. It doesn't have to be on the nose. That's beautiful. Oh, that's quite, that's quite on the nose. What, that Rambo becomes a missionary? Yeah. It's called Rambo Mission. Actually, doesn't he become a bit of a missionary in Rambo 4? When that guy goes to so, meet yeah. him, isn't he like building a village or something for some that's, Taliban? That's number two, isn't it? And he's, he's building... Isn't yeah, he like friends a... with the Taliban in one of them? Something like that, yeah. Rubber cat. Rambo gives up the killing and joins a Christian mission to, in Africa. Anyone who saw the Justin Panks, I'd watch that. That was basically the one of the things that he did. Uh, Rambo goes to the nook of the nook. It says Rambo goes to the jungle and tries to convince some locals to change religion. Uh, Sam the King says probably something racist. I well, might not read it. Uh, oh, so yeah. Sam the King says I ran my bow in whilst doing missionary because that's the kind of thing that he says. Oh, Sam, he can't help himself. Poor sod. Uh, Black Shield... Uh, Legion says, cop weapon sounds great. That's going back to something previously said. So that's me not doing very well with chat. <laughs> a group of confused Phil fans go on a mission to find a copy of Rambo on DVD. So these are just ideas, Dan. You think about these. I'm giving yeah, you time I, to think. Um, I've got an idea. It's a coming of age story. Oh, yeah. Okay. And it, it, it stars Alfie Bo. <laughs> Alfie Bo, the, is he a singer? Yeah, the opera singer Alfie Bow yeah. and his pet Ram. And uh, Alfie Bow's best friend. Um... <laughs> Has he done any acting, Alfie Bow? No, nah, give him a chance. Look at uh, bloody Harry Styles is in films now. He's in, he? he's just, he's in just Eternals. He's in. Yeah. Um, he's and he in ruined it. He, he, he took me out of the MCU, he did. Well, that Bloody film. Harry Styles show, that film took me out of the MCU, unfortunately. Yeah, and then that was the full stop, wasn't it? How many times? How many up. goes did it take for you to get into Eternals, or did you manage I've, it? I've watched it once. And I, it took it. me four attempts to get through that film, which I've never had with a Marvel film. It was. A they're run. all too good looking. I know everyone's kind of good looking in the MCU, but they're all sort of like, oh, everybody fancies this person. Let's pop them in. Yeah, it was poor. I think it was very poor. Very poor. Right, so uh, Alfie Bow and his pet Ram go on a mission. What did Alfie Bow sing? Sorry to interrupt. I don't really know Alfie Bow. Tell me a bit about Alfie Bow. The opera he's singer. just like um, yeah, but he does. He's like the the mum pleaser opera singer. He's there with uh, Michael Ball. Oh yeah. Him and Michael Ball sort of go up on stage and sing for all the middle aged women. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But Michael Ball was a bit shit, and Alfie Bow really carries him. Michael Ball every... was was he always a singer? Or was Michael Ball one of those people that sort of came to it as a celebrity? No, I think he was always a singer, but he, he went and did theatre and stuff like that. Mm. But the uh, the middle aged women like uh, Michael Ball's dimples, so that or Michael Dimples Balls, a... of course. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so Alfie Bow. Has a ram, a pet ram. That, that he rides. He rides? Like, Is it like, giant? Like... No, no, it's like a beach donkey. It's quite slow. <laughs> but he bought it. Yeah. 
and he refuses to get off. He's quite a stubborn pug. Yeah. And the mission is uh, Michael Ball um, was caught shoplifting in WH Swift's <laughs> and, he, and he's in the security room at the back. What, and, and he's got to uh, get in and get ball out. He's got to get him out. Got to get and how do you, how, if you if you need to travel somewhere and you need a battering ram, a ram is the, the get a ram. Battering ram, yeah. So the film is it's a comedy. Mm -hmm. It feels like you know one of those Christmas films that you get on BBC. It's like seven or eight o'clock, uh, not quite prime time on Christmas Day. Maybe a bit earlier than that then. And it's one of those like, made-for-TV films where you get those weird level of celebrity in it. It'd be like, yeah. I think Ant and Deck do it on their Saturday Night Takeaway or something, where they have well, uh, a, a whodunit or something. Yeah. Well, there was that SEO trot with Dustin Hoffman, wasn't there? That was made for Christmas on yes, BBC or that something. that was written by Rob Dahl, wasn't it? Yeah. It's taught us backwards. A little bit trivia for you. Yeah, very clever, very clever. So who's so right? Is, who's, who's involved? Who's made this film then? Is it that? Do you think? Do you think this is? Oh, uh, it's a uh, it's a bloody Doctor Who director. One oh, it's one of them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you know it's good because it's got yeah. Oh, Bradley Cooper, not Bradley Cooper. Bradley Walsh is uh, definitely plays a part in this as a a confused W. H. Smith's manager or something. Well, no, he's the the head security guard yeah. interrogating Michael Ball. Um, trying to act all tough. He's got all Cockney again. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And what it's, was he? Uh, uh, what was he caught nicking, Paulie? Um, Nuts magazine. <laughs> is that still a thing? No, well, this is a while ago. This oh, is, is it? Ago. Oh, it's from the nineties. Yeah. Well, the film is coming out this Christmas, but it's set, it's set in twenty years ago. Okay, okay, okay. But Michael Sorry. Ball still looks like a sixty-year-old. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, he's Michael Ball. He can't. He's playing himself. He can't buy Nuts magazine. He had Nuts, and then he wedged an FHM in the middle of the Nuts magazine. Mm, so he right. tried to buy the That's Nuts. Hold on, it would definitely be the other way round, wouldn't it? No one was wedging. No, FHM. he's never. He's never done it before. <laughs> no one's putting Nuts over the front of FHM. Like if you're hiding one of them, surely you're hiding Nuts. Hold on, well, Ball hiding Nuts. This is brilliant. <laughs> it writes itself. He uh he he's quite middle class, isn't he? He doesn't know how to steal. <laughs> he he's got money. They, what Michael about, Ball has what the happened? money to buy. Do you remember Anthony Worrell Thompson, the chef who was caught nicking? Yeah. yeah. He was very posh. He was. Well, sometimes it's like an, an addiction thing, isn't it? Yeah, I've got it. Yeah, definitely. I love a nick. Uh, what is it? Kleptomania. Yeah, I love a little nick. Didn't you love do you love a nick? I used to steal things as a as a child. What did you steal? Crust of bread. <laughs> oh, because you grew up in Dickensian in Britain, didn't you? I yeah. An apple yeah. from a, a market in Agrabad. <laughs> yes. And they used to call me Street Rat. <laughs> That's where we met, wasn't it, actually? Yeah, I, it was, I yeah. took an apple to give to an orphan, and then you took, well, the, you took the heat. I remember you uh, you led me out to the desert and said, go in that big tiger thing, yeah. get me the lamp. And we'll be friends forever. Yeah. And, uh, well, I should... didn't work out for you, did I it? I shouldn't have done it. I regret it now. No. How is your monkey? <laughs> He's still in there. <laughs> <laughs> That's an Aladdin reference for anyone who hasn't right. got a tiny child and had to watch yeah. those films 47,000 well, times. Well, the, these people are old enough to watch it first time around. Well, they, are they? I reckon so. They're all I mean, kids. I was just about. Um, so go so okay. Let's continue. I'm sorry, I derailed us there by pretending you were Aladdin. So this is going to be in kind of like two parts. So you got you got um, Alfie Bowes. Oh, the news the is in the between ground. the middle. Is that what it is? Is it straddling? Or we're going to use something. Yes. Yeah. We're going to use something. And then you got Ball is in the the room crying his eyes out as, he's as not Bradley Walsh is interrogating him. He's not used to it, is he? No. And then he's he's got all these hurdles as he gets to the W. H. Smiths. Rams through the, the big plate glass window, knocks over all the magazines. Pick a mix. Rams everywhere. the door down. Yeah, pick a mix. Gets ball. They both jump on the back of the ram. It's even slower. <laughs> and then at the end, they end up. At, um, Are they like on a, a slow speed chase? 
like the opposite of a high speed car chase. You've got yeah. Ball and Alfie Bow on this bull on this ram, and Bradley Walsh. What's Bradley Walsh clambering onto? Like he's got to be surely chasing on the back of something. He's else. he's on a, an office chair with a stick. But why? <laughs> why is he? I don't know why. I don't know why. I think he's just always wanted to do it. And uh, um, Michael, the thing is, Michael Ball wanted this magazine because there's a model in there that he really fancies. <laughs> so at the end of the film, they end up in like the town centre where there's like where is a, it set? Where is it set? Um, you know the Five Points and Gangs of New York. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> what they're in New York? <laughs> no, no. This felt like it was in Chatham. I'm going to be honest. We we do London. We do London, and they end up in Trafalgar Square at the end, and the Rams knackered and it just kills over. Oh, and then all the, what? all the police cars come in. Well, you've got to have some tragedy. 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 It kills over. All the police cars come in from all so the like directions. So like Piccadilly Circus, you've got like five roads that come into there. Kind yeah. Of thing. yeah. And all the police cars surround them. And um, they start singing. <laughs> Does it start well, snowing? Do... Gently snowing. Yeah. And then the model he fancied that was in the magazine shows up and says, I really like you. Uh, Michael Ball, and then out of nowhere, um, what's a famous model from the nineties? Uh, Naomi Campbell. Naomi Campbell shows up and takes Bo away because <laughs> she's a copper. <laughs> no, no, she just she's there with the other model that Ball fancies, and they're like, "We're both single. <laughs> Give it a go, yeah." What do they sing? What's the Christmas um, song they sing at the? Uh, uh, sing... Is it Eros? That statue. They go up the that, steps. They do, um, you know, like Bowie and uh, Little Drummer Boy. Uh, Peace on earth. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> bum, bum. And then, uh, well, because Bowie's not a very good singer, but he's the <laughs> one just doing the... Uh, but he's got um, huge bum, sales. Bum, bum. He's got huge sales. You can't say that about Ball. Huge sales. No, it's because of his dimples. I mean, all these middle aged women, what have they got in their age range? Let's be honest on television. It's Pasquale. It's Ball. It's. Um, Dickinson. It's Knowles. Yeah, that's what I mean. That's what I mean. And he looks relatively young um, for his age. So they get away. But I, th- I mean, are the police pressing charges that he's getting, trying to nick Nuts magazine anyway? No, it's a Christmas film. And what about the Ram? Oh! Can the ram... it, oh, fuck. It, it becomes an angel. I was hoping the ram, <laughs> Santa could come and collect the ram and use it as one of his... Well, Santa arrives and That's... another supermodel goes with him. <laughs> but um, he arrives. Is that Hugh scoop... Grant? Can it be Hugh Grant? Yeah. And then the, <laughs> the, uh, the other model is actually a sex worker that he gets caught with, like in real life. Yeah, and it's a lovely. And then reference. Santa gets off, and he says, "Literally, you've done you've done a good job." And then he picks up the ram over his shoulder, <laughs> and then just sort of tosses it onto the back of his car. And, Merry Christmas, lads! <laughs> as, he, as he buggers off, and then the we cut to a year later. He's eating. Cut to a year later. Alfie bows with his model. Michael Ball's living in a house with uh, Naomi Campbell. Christmas. Jumpers. And they look up at the window when they hear a bell ringing. They see all the reindeer. Guess who's at the front? Um, the Ram. Oh, the Ram. The, the Ram is at the front. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Oh, that's really beautiful. That's mm. a really, really beautiful, beautiful film. I think so. And to think it came from <laughs> Michael Ball stealing a, a Nuts magazine. I think that's... I honestly think that's one of the best films we've ever had, and I'd watch that. I I would watch that. I genuinely think... That's one of the most beautiful films we've ever had. Genuinely. Love that. Let's Thanks. see what people think over there. Uh, Tony Khan says he was in Les Mis on stage. That's Michael yeah. Ball, wasn't it? Um, not the film, though. Did he not make the film? That's a blow, isn't it? When he's, mm. you're in the stage thing and they go, right, I'm making a film of it. Oh, well, are you? Yes. <laughs> and we're, you're never going to guess who we've cast in your... We're, we're, we're our dimples <laughs> quote. Uh... Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Articus, every suggestion is completely different from a real Rambo film because I think we've had all we've all had enough of them. That's true. That is true. There's been six, isn't there? Um, uh, 
uh, Hat at Midnight, hello to you. Um, people asking how other people are. Um, Black Shield Legion says Michael Rollerball. Oh, hello, <laughs> Hat at Midnight. Just followed this minute. Thank you very much. Thank you to Batters for the subscription as well. Six months subscription from Batters. Thank you very much. Gravity Gunner. The producers of First Blood go on a mission to find a screenwriter who understands why it was good. <laughs> yeah, that's a good idea. At it midnight. It's like the Blues Brothers 2, but with Sly as the dead one. <laughs> I like that. Um, Mum, Mumalar, Mumalar, 35. Very difficult at reading names. The universe has righted itself once more. I don't know what that was in relation to. I'm not very good at this. Um, SEO trot equals skull lob. Don't know what that yeah, means. I don't, I don't get that. No. Black Shield Legion. Bulls Magazine. Yeah, because it because of nuts. See, Bulls Magazine. Good. Yeah. Uh, Hattie at Midnight says he's a DJ on Radio 2 these days. And you didn't think it'd work again. <laughs> That's true. It's a WH Myths Ram Raid, says Sam, getting the point. Well done, Sam. You're really following along well this, this evening. Um, seven Dials in Covent Garden. That's a good shout. That is a good shout, the Seven Dials, because that is seven roads leading yeah, leave to a statue yeah. there. And there's a good, That'd be a good spot, yeah. And there's a brew dog on the corner of one of them. So if we were <laughs> filming it, we could nip in. Um Lamb for Christmas dinner, says Sam the King. Roast lamb. There's a lot of that. People were thinking there's a lot of people going to be eating the lamb, but you absolutely mm. pulled that out. Like I love. Well, the imagine fact... how you're going to feel after watching that on Christmas Eve. I love it. I love that the ram is leading the way for Santa after it. Genuinely, Michael Ball has three times as much blood in his body as a normal person. <laughs> <laughs> I love those facts. I love those facts. Let's get some Michael Ball facts in, please. He was in Toast of London. Um, Dan Smoke Alarm beeping. I find it strangely soothing. I fucking don't, Mum Laugh, 35. <laughs> I've promised that I'm going to fix it one day, haven't I? That is something you I have, do. yeah. Well, I think that Now's was... the time. Now's I... the time Mum's desperate to get that fixed. Oh, really? Yeah. I'll be there. I'll see you tomorrow. <laughs> Got to say... Absolutely loved Rambo Mission. It almost feels like a shame to click on past it, but I think that's one of my favourite films we've ever had. I can imagine it. That's the beauty of it. I can see it. I felt it. I love it. So press, pressure's on for your next one, okay? Here, Are you ready for your next film? Yes, I am. Blonde Tiger. <laughs> <laughs> um. Well, see, you've got a lot of places to go from for here. This could be uh, your, your, uh, I'm gonna say karate film, but I don't know if that's the right. Yeah, thing. but that's too predictable. Yeah, it's too predictable. Gonna, predictable. Yeah. It could be a follow up to the Tiger King, but with albino tigers. Um, this is uh, this is a family adventure movie. A family adventure. About... Um, a tiger with a blonde head. <laughs> well, like a stripe, like um, in Gremlins. Uh, like a, uh, what's his name? Pat Sharp mullet. I just, I just burped and muted my mic. I'm getting really good at this, aren't I? Professional. And then uh, It's like it. a tiger with a, like a Pat Sharp mullet. Is it an animated film? I don't know. I think, yeah, he, the, the tiger's animated. The yeah, rest yeah, yeah. aren't. The okay. people are real. Kind of like Paddington. <laughs> Who is it? A, who's the voice of the tiger? Lovely, lovely Biff. Who's the voice of the tiger? Right, the voice of the tiger is. Brace yourselves! Brace yourselves! Here's someone you've not heard of. Alan Rickman. Oh, he's dead, but it's set before. Okay. Oh yeah, it was way before. Excellent. Hello, I'm a tiger. <laughs> Roar. I, I didn't know that was an impression you couldn't do. Very impressive. Yeah, no. <laughs> Potter, no, Potter, no, I can't do it. <laughs> He's, yeah, yeah. But, you know, along those lines. Um, he was he was uh, Marvin in uh, Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, a film that was cast to perfection but was utterly shit. Yeah, I saw that in the cinema. Yeah, I saw it in the cinema. I mean, I'm obsessed with Hitchhiker's Guide and they just, it was just a shit film, but very brilliantly <laughs> casted, very brilliantly casted. Ooh. 
What's uh, going to happen with this blonde tiger? Well, that's I really think... where you're at. I love that he's so he's got a mullet. He's got a blonde blonde mullet. Where's it set? Is it is it that the is it like a Paddington thing where he's come over? Is he escaped from a zoo? Oh yeah, he came over and he's in London Zoo and he's a massive attraction. Everybody wants to see the blonde tiger. Mm. And uh, every Friday they mock up Funhouse with this tiger. <laughs> and two twins go to their slaughter in there. Yeah, <laughs> two twin goats. Two antelope. Get, get yeah. lowered in. <laughs> oh, hold on. Maybe this is another job for the actor who played the ram in the previous film. Yeah, yeah, maybe. So it's a lot. It's like you know, remember when Sam Worthington was in loads of blockbusters for like a year. Yeah. It's a what bit was like that. that. It's a bit like that in this ram. So like, I recognise I that ram. Why was he in so many films, Sam Worthington? I don't know. I reckon his agent just had the phone, like, the phone yeah. number of some important people. Some for real, him. real big films. He was though. in Avatar. He was in Terminator Salvation. Yeah. He was in, um, what's the one about the Golden Fleece? No, it was... Uh, uh, yeah, Clash of the Titans. Clash of the Titans and the sequel to that. He did brilliantly. He did. Black Shield Legion says Worthington's originals. Lovely bit of business. Although some of them were copies of old films, of course, so... Uh, um, this tiger came from uh, India. You get tigers in India, don't you? You I absolutely do. Famously, you do, yeah. Yeah. So the owner of this tiger originally popped out to the shop. In when he come back, some, yeah, and somebody had taken the tiger. Very and then he shop finds out, based. Very shop based. <laughs> Yeah, so he, he sort of you see him watching the news and uh, talking about their attraction and showing a clip of this tiger doing fun house in London Zoo, and then he travels to uh, to London to get his tiger back. Fair play. Because uh, although it's a family film, it's implied that he used to fuck the tiger. <laughs> I mean, they don't show anything. No, no, no. It's but just, it's, implied, it's implied. It's inferred. It's implied. Yeah. Is it inferred or that... implied? I don't know. Yeah, well, when he eventually catches up to the tiger, he, he licks in there mouth. at night. <laughs> yeah, and the and the and the tiger's in a go car, and it's like, what are you doing? <laughs> oh, I you loved go... those go cars. They were so slow, but I loved them. He's like, this isn't you. You never used to ride around in go karts. And the tiger, I've changed. <laughs> I'm not who I used to be. He doesn't want to go back. He doesn't want to go back. Actually, yeah, I've just I, thought so. Should we not have cast him with an Indian actor? This does feel like one of those things where we the tiger, the we've tiger whitewashed. Not, not it does feel like we've whitewashed. Well, the tiger only learned to speak. Well, no, uh, yeah, maybe. I'm not going to do an impression no. of an Indian actor. <laughs> Go on. <laughs> but okay, so... I, I like it being Alan Rickman now. Alan yeah, okay, Rickman's yeah. doing an Indian accent. <laughs> he's all right because he's dead. He can. Yeah. Um, He's so the the other we've cast we've definitely cast uh, an Indian actor as his love interest, I guess. Yeah, we'll have the guy from Life of Pi. I like mm. him. Mm -hmm. Very good. Yeah, he's a good actor. Not the boy. The guy who's telling oh. the story. No, I don't know. Because he he's got very full lips. I imagine that he looks like the kind of guy who would fuck a tiger. <laughs> well, we've not named him, so I think that's fine. Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> he goes there and the tigers are interested because he's having a whirl of a time yeah, he's, on the go he's met London da, people da, 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 da. yeah he's just running around to that tunes band right until all the lights go off at night and then he sneaks in and has and a go like, the go-karts Pat Sharp definitely had a go of the go-karts didn't he? Oh, I reckon he was too bloody boring too professional well Paul Gannon friend of the show he has worked quite closely with Pat Sharp so has he? he could ask him did he ever get a little go on but either A, the go karts or B, the twins. <laughs> <laughs> he must have been asked that question so many times. I think for like 30 quid, you can ask Pat Sharp yourself on Cameo. Can you? I think something um, like that. He's not that expensive. Maybe, yeah, maybe I will. He must get it all the time. Can I just stress Black Shield Legion? We don't see him fucking the tiger. He doesn't even say. Yeah, it's not I'm, something... I miss fucking you. No, it's just implied by the way he touches him and stuff. He loves him. He loves him. He loves him a little bit too much. He brought him up. And uh, there's a new family that really like the tiger. Mm. No, it's the original twins from Funhouse. 
they go to London Do they do Zoo. the voices of... Oh, they're in it as themselves. They're in they it, the yeah. voices of the... They're in it the and they become great friends with this tiger because they, for some reason, he feels very familiar. It's the fat, sharp mullet. And uh, the tiger reveals them, I can spook. Wow. <laughs> And it's that when it all be- he becomes a hero, like it becomes the attraction, or do they not? Does he not take, talk in public? Well, then he just says, "You've got to get me out of here." That's fair. You've got to get me out of London Zoo, please. Is and it... they're like, "Yeah, all right, we do that for you, Mister Tiger. What's we'll about you?" And we're like, "Miss Pat, I'll dress his soul." Because <laughs> he's and dead then... in this world. And he's only asking them now because that other guy's there trying to fuck him again. But that's implied. It's implied. Oh, that's so sad, though, isn't it? That it's a story about bestiality when really it feels like it's a quite a beautiful story. But well, it's not about the beast yet. It's just implied. It's just like because a... he could love the tiger, but it's just a shame he's really loved the tiger. Do well, you know he loves I mean? the tiger with his penis. Yeah, we've all done it. To like with to one person or another, haven't we? But never a tiger you, for me. Do you reckon animals when they have sex with a human, all the other animals are like, oh, yeah, I do think that. Yeah, you reckon yeah. we're the worst of all of the animals, aren't we? When it comes to that, we are. Yeah. We're all like bald oh. and sort of <laughs> out of proportion. Well, fucking, there are newts and fucking turtles and shit. They don't have any hair. And no one's having sex with ugly. a turtle. No one is having sex with a turtle. Sounds like a challenge. <laughs> Some of them are really old. They've been around the block. Yeah, they know what they're doing. You know, they, they know, know their way doing. around a, I don't know, something. <laughs> I think we need to rush through this one because uh, we, we, it's, we're about 47 minutes in. Yeah, I, uh, so... I'm just slightly concerned that we don't really know what the story is. He's kept, well, he wants to escape. This, this famous tiger. Pat Sharp famous famously £54 on Cameo, by the way. Fizbin, thank you very uh, much. 54 Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, and the guy has come back to get his tiger back. The tiger doesn't want, he wants to go. He, he gets the two girls to get him out. And that guy from India dies. But you don't see it, it's implied. No, he, he falls in the gorilla cage and the gorilla fucks the shit out of him. But that's implied. Mm, it's not a Rivet. kid. It feels very difficult to no, be a kid. It's implied. <laughs> that something fucks the shit out of something else. Yeah, well, he falls into the um, the gorilla thing. You yeah, don't see yeah, the gorilla yeah. shat, like, fucking the guy, but you see that the gorilla, uh, you see just uh, like a, a fraction of a second of the bell end just poking out of the... <laughs> and is it like <laughs> one he's... of those poor gorilla costumes? Do you remember in the 80s where it would be a man in a gorilla suit and you'd just see his human eyes go, oh! Yeah, yeah, very much like that. And then you just, after a while, you see uh, it cuts back to that scene, and it's always the guy who was basically raped. Um, it's always him, yes. but he's come this to terms. Places you're describing. He comes to terms with it, and he's just like laying there with his hair being played with, and he's with just a cigarette. Yeah, he's absolutely fine. That was a real sort of trope of those films, wasn't it? The person who'd it basically was. been because there's the thing in Top Secret where a cow or a horse mounts. A pantomime horse, a pantomime cow type thing. Two Nazis in a <laughs> in a cow, and then a a another cow mounts that pantomime ball, cow, ball, and ball, then ball. has sex with them. And he's like, "Come on, we've got to go." He's like, "Just wait one more minute." <laughs> and it's, just, <laughs> it's atrocious. It was very so they get the tiger out, and the tiger lives in their shed. <laughs> it's not a happy ending. Well, it is for the tiger. Because he gets to live with the, the Funhouse twins. And does he continue his sort of... Because he's quite a sexualised tiger. Was he... Was he? No, he, did, he didn't enjoy it. Oh, this is grim. This is really grim. Why do you think you wanted to get away? That's fair. That is fair. Does the guy stay in the zoo? Like, well, he stays with the gorilla, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it never works out. Because once you've had a gorilla, you don't go back. <laughs> That's what they find. You don't go yeah. silver back. No. <laughs> Sam the King. Yeah, not, Sam the King says. I, I don't want you to say anymore. Sam the King says I don't like this film. I think he speaks for. 
He speaks for the but rest of us. Only because I said it was a family film. If I said it was more something different, then it would be yeah, fun. Yeah, but if you thriller. hadn't have stipulated which film it was, we'd have all been thinking the worst. Yeah, like Paddington. <laughs> yeah, that you said Paddington. it was like Paddington. I don't remember a bit in Paddington where the Browns sexually assault Paddington. Wasn't that Paddington too? Wasn't that like that? Yeah, he did go to prison, didn't he? <laughs> Sam says, if the tiger can speak, he can consent. I don't. He could only speak, Sam, when he come to the UK. That's why he sounds like Alan Rickman. I'm not sure. Like You've gone from one of my favourite films we've ever had to one of my most disturbing there. Well, he can only go up. That's what the... Uh... Anyway, it doesn't matter. Are it's you ready? Really said. Yeah, that's why I didn't, didn't finish that. Yes. Well done. Um... <laughs> Are you ready for your third film? Thank God. Yeah. Here we please. go. Your third film. Lost Cobra. Lost oh, Cobra. God, this sounds like... Oh, you say this Cobra. Is about... <laughs> this is about a Cobra that was living in India with a guy. <laughs> uh... <laughs> Came to London too. <laughs> no. <A> sequel. Because <laughs> uh, the first one was such a huge hit. <laughs> Lost Cobra. Do you say Cobra? You said then, didn't you? I say Cobra. Oh, I thought you said Cobra. I think you said Cobra. I would never say Cobra. Who's this guy? Anyone know who this guy is? Oh, Cobra Commander, is well, it? That's not Cobra Commander, but he is a uh, Cobra. Snake Eyes? No, don't just keep saying. I've never you... really watched you, I Joe. Who's that? People all know. I've G.I. Joe suddenly realised Cobra have disappeared entirely and they have to go and find him. Oh, right, okay. Oh, that is Asp Captain. Thank you, Ash Fraps McNulty. His name is Asp Captain. Really? Yeah. Sounds yeah. like a. Ask Captain, yeah. Yeah. I'm sitting there now. What about this guy? This is what this is now. You've got. Are you, wor you worried about my Lost Cobra plot? That's why you're distracted. I'm just giving everybody. you some time to make it slightly less rapey than the other one. <laughs> Who's this chap? Uh, I misplaced my no beer in a curry house, says Sam. He's always eating. Sequel to Cobra with Stallone, but he doesn't know where he is. Hey, that's a good one. Um, Crate Major is this guy. Wow. Okay. I have an idea. Okay, well, let's come back to you for your idea then. Because right, I don't want you to read their ideas. And if there's anything similar to mine, then it's like I'm ripping them off. Okay. That's fair enough, isn't it? Lost Cobra. Let's have it. Right, this is a horror film. I didn't save the last one. I just realised that's a shame. Uh, this is a horror film. Sorry, a teen horror film. Yeah, I like it. That's it. No, it's set <laughs> in a school. I'm really <laughs> dreading the day that I get a guest on that basically does that. That is going to yes, happen. You know what I don't? <laughs> it's going to be someone I don't really know, and they're going to go, "Yeah, it's a teen horror," and then just stop yep. talking. I'm going to go. Uh, it stars Jennifer Love Hewitt. Okay. No, that's them. That's not me. Right, so it's a it's a teen horror set in a, a high school, and oh. they got like a. Is it prom night? Got, no, no, um, no. It might be. It might be at the end. They have like a, a brand new science lab uh, with all the the best facilities. There's a nuclear reactor and everything. What? And well, it's a brand new science lab. It's the best science lab. Do they lab have that? In... In, is there such a thing? Because I know people have made science labs in like their uh, have made uh, nuclear reactors in their bedroom and stuff. Yeah, well, this one has one for for educational purposes, wow. and because um, it's the best one in the America. It's the best one in the America. Good. Yeah. So they have uh, this the science teacher who is played by Randy Quaid. Ooh, lovely bit of business. He has a pet cobra, and the whole setup is that the um, he kind of teases it, teases it, bangs on the glass, and he's just like to the kids, he don't mind, ding, 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 he don't mind. And all the kids are like, they're quite sympathetic because they're quite woke, you know, they're quite modern day kids. Mm -hmm. They're like, you shouldn't treat animals like that. And uh, how do you know that that snakes are he and all that kind of thing? Got a big you know, old really, so, dick. Randy Quaid is is a uh, is a uh, he's uh, notoriously an arsehole, isn't he? When is he re in real life? Stuff. He is. Yes, he's basically playing himself. He's got a bit crazy. Is he the guy in from Independence Day? Yeah, Dennis Quaid's brother. 
the other yeah. guy, Quaid, who's in The Boy's Uncle. In The Boy's Uncle? You know The Boy's, the TV show? Yeah. That's a Quaid. Is it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The the guy who isn't um, Carl Urban, he's a Quaid. He's uh, Meg Ryan's son and Dennis Quaid's son. Oh, what? Huey? Huey, yeah. You can kind of see it now, actually, thinking about it. Yeah. Is anyway, it, back to this. It's Quaid. Sorry, I shouldn't have interrupted you. <laughs> He's not in this. It's oh, Randy Quaid's yeah, right yeah. arsehole. Oh, it's a conspiracy um, nut, said Biddy Viking. It, it's, it keeps teasing this cobra so it does the old, you know, flanning its, you know, its neck out to show the kiss, show off in his brand new science. It's not showing off, is it? Are well, he wants to show off his cobra. What's the point of Oh, sorry, I thought, you meant do... the, I thought you meant the cobra was showing off. Sorry. Well, it kind of is. But why would it do that? Why have a cobra if it doesn't? I mean, have you ever seen a cobra in real life and they don't even do that? And you think, it's shit. Yeah, that is shit. This one, he does it because he makes it all angry. Uh, one night when he's there doing um, marking papers, he gets drunk and he falls over and his head goes through the glass. The cobra gets out. Shit. Bites him on his tip. <laughs> Does a cobra do that thing that um like pythons do and like just swallow things whole? No, no, they, they, no, no. I mean, not yet. And then it slivers into the reactor room. Oh my god! They shouldn't have had it. They shouldn't have had it on, and they shouldn't have had it open. They're my three yeah. big points from this. Well, there is a scene where he unlocks it, and then you, you the camera lingers on the door <laughs> yeah. to sort of yeah, show yeah. that it doesn't get locked together. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He slivers in there, and someone in the just morning. says foreshadowing. <laughs> uh, the 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 snake grows massive, and it eats Randy Quaid's body. Yes. So there's no evidence, and it's gone. So when the kids come in after the Where weekend, where does it go if it's that massive? C- uh, it's ceiling, a loft. ceiling void. Yeah, it's in the ceiling. Yeah, uh, the kids come back. Randy Quaid's gone. Snake's gone. Just a bit of broken glass. Reactor doors open. Oh my god! Um, well, they carry on with their day. Can I just really imagine a scene where? There's a kid, maybe, like, in these films, sometimes it would be a fat kid, like, because, you know, they pick on these guys, or some Mm. helpless kid, and then that kid is, like, got his headphones on, and a Walkman or whatever, and he's dancing and got his eyes closed, but behind him you see the giant snake just come down from the ceiling void, and as it's about to eat the kid or do something, someone else walks in the room and is like, Tim, what are you doing? And then Tim, and but the snake's not there. Do you know that the snake's yeah. gone quickly? Well, these days, right, it'd be that kid walking down the aisle, like down the corridor, mm. with his music, you know, obliviously dancing. Yeah. And then the snake would come out and just eat all the kids behind him. That's like, good. Gory. That's good. Yeah, while this music's really loud, so you can't hear anything that's and, going but on But that behind. music, that music is related to snakes, 100%. No, no, what they do these days is it something that's completely different. To subvert it, it's like uh, oh, 99 right. red balloons or something. Yeah, and the snakes go, th- 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 yeah, just eating everyone. And then he's sort of walking Blood out, everywhere. goes to the lunchroom, and no one's in there. So he, he stuffs his face. <laughs> <laughs> he just starts picking up other people's lunch and eating it. And then, like, that snake's eating everyone in that school, apart from a handful of kids. Yeah. There was a kid. That's a collective a noun of... for a group of children, isn't it? A handful, yes, it is. a handful, a handful of children. Of children. <laughs> <laughs> there were, like, four. Uh, there was a nerdy kid. There was a sexy cheerleader kid. There was a jock. And there was a, a bully. Uh, and they'd all arranged to have a, a blackjack game in, in one of the, the classrooms to try and bring all the gangs together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they can go and fight the other school. So they're the only ones that are left, along with this kid who's in the uh, in the in the uh, dining room, the the you know food hall. Mm-hmm. So it's five against snake. I don't think I should say anything else because it would spoil the film. Is that because you don't want to, or because you think this might get made? Because I do want to remind you, as good as this is, this isn't a real film. <laughs> I think this could get made, especially that scene where he's there dancing away to the I see that. balloons. I honestly and see that. Snake, yeah, and there's just fucking bits flying everywhere. He sort of like might turn his head and an arm goes whoosh, over his shoulder. I like that. That is good. Be good. Uh, so you're not prepared to, uh, you're not prepared to actually. Well, should we do the order of them dying? Yeah, definitely do the order of them dying. Yes, please. 
Right, so uh, the fat kid meets the other kids. Yeah. So eventually. We've got, we've got the jock, we've got the cheerleader, we've got the nerd. The bully. The bully. And the nerd, yeah. Okay. First one to go is the nerd. Surprised you, didn't it? That did surprise me, yeah. Yeah. I mean, this isn't like a, like a modern day nerd. Is like the bully, is the jock and the cheerleader constantly getting off with each other? Oblivious. Now the jock's trying to, but the cheerleader is um, actually quite intelligent and uh, doesn't really go for all that sort of thing. Okay. Good. But the jock is absolutely a rapist. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Which they always are. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So the nerds are first to go. Now you're thinking, well, nerds are quite cool. Well, this isn't. This is like an eighties nerd. Yeah. This is um, when they were bullied and they were prime and, for bullying. You know, like they they sort of covered in snot like a garbage pal kid it's when they basically put glasses on someone and said that made them a nerd like yeah. oh he's the... wearing glasses the thing is right this nerd they find out later on because they're fighting this snake throughout the film that he had a rifle in his locker oh my god so i'm glad he's dead yeah but they're also glad they got the rifle oh yeah of course but because he yeah. was going to shoot up the school i assume yeah yeah, so we're glad he's dead. But we get the rifle. Um, Is it an AR-15 the... or whatever they're called? One of those ones that they use? It's a blunderbuss. Oh, wow. Like an elephant gun type thing. Yeah, is it? it is. It's an elephant gun, which is perfect for a, a giant cobra, wouldn't you yeah, say? Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. And uh, so a few more die. Uh, the, the kid in the dining hall gets killed next. Oh, no. The snake. Yeah, well, he's he's just a bit too oblivious. Okay. The um, the snake is full for a few days there. <laughs> <laughs> Why are they still in the school, I've just realised? They're locked in. Because this brand new school, whenever there's any kind of fire or anything like that, the doors just lock. So Could are you... the police outside? or? Yeah, but because it's so new, nobody got the codes. Nobody really has any keys. The keys are inside. The windows are bulletproof. You know, it's a proper facility. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I do understand. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, maybe it didn't disappear for days. It just disappeared for a couple of hours because okay. it was quite full. Okay. Um, there's the jock. The bully's female, by the way. Love that. Turn, turning that on its head. And the cheerleader? Male. <laughs> and the bully? Frog. <laughs> <laughs> They do that. They do do that. Bloody frogs. <laughs> <laughs> so the uh, the cheerleader. Um, when is, is this from? Sorry, as well. Is this a nineties film? Is this a modern film? It's a modern film, but it's set in the eighties, like Stranger Things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is this a yeah, Netflix the... type thing? Then is this a Netflix yes. movie? Yes. Kind of thing that come out of Netflix. I Nobody think. Really are knows. we sticking a few of the Stranger Fi- Stranger Things kids in this? Nah, fuck those kids. No, we've got um, other actors. We give them a chance. Okay, that's fine. We'll do that. That's all good. Yeah, because those Stranger Things kids, sure, they were cute. They were good actors. They got a bit too old, some of them kids. Yeah. A bit too old and gangly and weird looking. Yeah, Let's yeah, be yeah. honest. And they're all yeah. mega stars now, most of them as well, aren't they? They've all got... Yeah, that, that kind of comes through, doesn't it, in their arrogance? I haven't watched the last series, so I don't really Have you know. Not? But... Got that Wolf Finn Hart or Finn Wolf Hart. He's, he's the arrogance is bloody shines through. Which one's Finn Wolfhard? He's the skinny one with the the big bushy hair. Dust. He's the one who's in love with Elle. No, I've not seen it. <laughs> Why ask questions? Oh, no, I'd like to pretend that I know what I'm talking about. Sometimes I'm down with the kids. Um. So okay, I want a theme tune. Have you got like like what's you know when you have a big song on one of these films? Is it going to be Night Nine Red Balloons? Is the big like slowed down version of that? You know, like they did with um, something what? in the way in the Batman. Yeah. Is it going to be like what that? Can... Ninety nine. And then it goes at the end. Yeah, balloons. when they're like sort of it, it kills everyone eventually. But at the end scene, there's the bully, the cheerleader, and the jock left. It kills the... such a bold choice to leave them. By the way, I really yeah agree. kills the bully. But it's all up within a matter of minutes because it's just shit is going on. It's slow motion. It's only two minutes of actual footage, but they slowed it down to <laughs> twenty so minutes. So much, yeah. Yeah. So that cool. ninety nine red balloons is ninety nine red balloons. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
I got this. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah and then the snakes, like, and then eventually the uh, cheerleader shoots the cobra in the dick. No, shoots it in the head with the elephant gun. Doesn't kill it. Oh my but god! The hole, yeah, I know. Well, it's massive. It's really big. So then uh, she remembers back to a science class and she concocts, like, quickly. She's right next to the science room. She runs in there and makes a bomb. With uh, this nuclear reactor, she can make a nuclear bomb. Yeah. Well, she picks up the nuclear reactor. They shouldn't have it, had it, it up its no, ass. they shouldn't have. <laughs> well, that's the tagline. Don't have a nuclear reactor. Oh, I haven't asked for any taglines, actually. That's one yeah, of the... Yeah. Oh, I'm so, glad yeah, you didn't can... ask for one of the last one. <laughs> a blonde tiger. He's gonna fuck it. He's gonna fuck it. That Blondes is... have more fun. Is the tagline <laughs> of that one? <laughs> um, and what does she do with the reactor? Shoves it up his ass. Yeah. Well, she knows about pivots and pulleys and levers and all that sort of thing mm. from a, she's a, a physics class. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, she's a smart cheerleader. So she you rigs but up some do, kind of... But they do, they chuck people, don't they? They have to know about all that stuff. Yeah. You're going to be throwing yeah, something. As well. So she's got a bit of arm strength as well. Oh, God. So yeah. she, so she r- makes a rig, basically pushes it, the reactor goes into the snake's mouth. And... Uh, she says something it, like, chew on... Oh, it's got to be a yeah. pun, hasn't it? Um React to react that, to that. Motherfucker. React to that, motherfucker. <laughs> How's this reaction? Um, um, atom, no, uh, uh, uranium, no, um, uranium, half... my parade, bitch. Um, good. Uh, wait till you get the fallout of this one. No, it doesn't work. Um, uh, radiate this motherfucker. <laughs> I don't know. She did the best. Um, no, she what she does is she gets TikTok out. No, no, because it's in the old days. No, no, she'll do that anyway because it's inconsistent. This film is it? Yeah, so they got like a they think they had TikTok in the 80s because this film was made by 19 year olds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, and then she's like, Here's my reaction, and she films herself. Tossing Gosh. that reactor into the snake's mouth. Now, what do you think happens when it goes into the snake's mouth? Oh, hold on, Beardy Viking snake. Me and you are gonna fall out. Well done, very good. Uh, what happens when she toss it into its mouth? Yeah, I don't know. Uh, nothing really. I mean, it just chokes. Chokes to death. Yeah, because it goes in sideways, and you just see it chabbing out. And it's like, and then it finally does that thing with its neck. Yeah. <laughs> yes, when it's dead, yeah. and it just goes. <laughs> <laughs> I imagine that's what happens. Okay, good one. That's a good one. That is Lost Cobra. So, are you Lost ready Cobra. for your f- penultimate film, your fourth film? Yeah. Can I just say how good your internet connection has been? Absolutely <laughs> superb tonight. I presume so. I mean, I don't know for other people, but for me, it's been absolute an absolute delight having you on. I mean, in terms of the standard of video and audio here we go with your fifth film your fourth film there'll be another animal true warriors true warriors that's a good title that is that is a uh we're gonna go down the mike lee road again oh yeah you love a bit of mike lee don't you i do true warriors what do you think in the chat as well let's get let's get this is this is a football hooligan film lovely at West Ham. Oh, bloody West Ham, yeah. Yep. Yeah. And um, they're the true warriors in the end. Like the very last sign. Spoilers, but it's going to say at the end. It doesn't matter. And... I, should, I do need to point out with you, we don't have a budget to make these films. The spoilers is fine. You can spoil these. Yeah. Okay. At the very end, um, Ray Winston turns oh. to Bob Hoskins. And says, Hang on a minute, this is a lovely <laughs> bit of casting. Yeah. Lovely. Turns to uh, Bob Hoskins and says, we were the true warriors. Are they covered in blood and sitting in the street in a pile yeah. of teeth? Bob Hoskins has got half a bottle sticking out his head. <laughs> and it's his name, half a bottle. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, yeah, your fucking name's half a bottle, isn't it? Look. Um. So... Right, they are football hooligans. Are they on rival yeah, ones West Ham and ones Chelsea or whatever? 
Millwall, wasn't it? Millwall, I think? yeah, Millwall, they're bad. Yeah. They're Millwall, our shit them. That's what they say. They say that 17 times. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Millwall, our shit them. And then uh, Millwall, uh, slightly different take on it. West, West Ham. Ham. Their shit. <laughs> so what's the what's the premise? What makes this any different from Green Street or one of those? Other... Nothing at all. No, because be they're honest. all it's, the same. It's exactly the same. Yeah. Uh, I it's... mean, they go to a pub and uh, Frank, what's his name? You know the guy from Green Street who pretends to be Joe Pesci from Goodfellas? No, I don't know. Frank something. Frank I'm sure Sidebottom. <laughs> well, there's, there's a character like him. He dies. Yeah, what dies um, in a fight in a football yeah. hooligan fight? Yeah, well, no, because it's like this is the biggest football hooligan fight that's ever happened. There's literally seventeen thousand wow people fighting. That's a big turnout. Ask me how many survived. How many survived? Bob Hoskins and Ray Winston. They're laying in the pools of blood. Well, it's good, though. Yeah. At least we've whittled down some of their worst fans, you know, because I go to football and knowing that there's 17,000 hooligans out there, that does put the fear of shit up me, to be mm. honest. Well, they're just the ones that showed up. Yeah. But at least they're dead. Yeah. And then, but, I mean, the moral of it is that um, look what happened to them. Um. Well, yeah, they're... Yeah, I know. So, I mean, this yeah, is for all yeah. other football hooligans. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Look at them. Look, that so, one's got his head up that guy's ass, and he's dead. <laughs> is that is that way the way some of them die? Yeah, well, I mean, there's seventeen thousand. There's every possible death in that. Are we pile seeing that play out? Is that the, yeah, how yeah. this film is? So it's one bit. It's like the biggest battle scene. Yeah, it's all one take. The whole film's one take. Where does it take place? Because, like, West Ham are East London, Millwall, I think, South London. Is it... In Asda Car Park. Asda, in a big Asda. Uh, it's, it is a big one, yeah. This reminds me, have you ever seen that Shrove football match that happens in the Midlands, where it's, like, on Shrove Day, uh, they have two sections of a town they gather together and then a ball in an Asda car park it is. There's like this plinth and someone throws a ball in and the, there's a goal, there's two goals a mile apart in this town and they've just got to score a goal. That's it. And then all day they battle and wrestle and fight and it's all all go. People fall into rivers. They bustle. Through. All the shops are boarded up well, that, for this day. They're allowed to do this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like an official thing. All the shops are literally boarded up that day because people fall into windows and stuff. There's thousands of people. It's called show football, I think. Yeah. And it's more of a battle than a football match. Says it's think, of, uh, think of a catchier name. And then it's like one nil. Every year it's one nil. And me and my wife went there. We happened to be there on that day once. And we come out of the Asda and it was quite scary. There was thousands of people. You just so happened to be in that Asda on that day. Yeah, yeah, we did. Yeah. And it was happening. You're in this film. You're in this bloody I'm film. In the world, you're in, yeah, you're in that Asda. You know me. <laughs> with I, probably, your wife. I probably would be. You know. No, me. but you're not part of the fight. And you're like, oh, for fuck's sake. The one day I decided to go to I this Asda. With a Miles bar, like, ooh. <laughs> and we go, is, is that? Ash, the streamer, the famous Twitch streamer. <laughs> um, but, um, right, so let me do the structure. It's all one take, mm. right? Revolutionary. Ashbourne is the name of the place. Thank you, Plant81. Ashbourne. Is that where you were born? Is that why you went to the Asda? No. Thank you, though. I'm from, I'm from Danbourne. <laughs> Did you like me not... Yes, anding you, just shutting you down with a no. It hurt to do it, but I thought it would be funnier than it was. <laughs> well, it goes, it didn't work. Did right, it? so the football match at the very beginning of the game, we don't even see the match. That's irrelevant. Yeah, yeah, of we course. Just see... There's no way West Ham and Millwall are allowing that football, any footage of no. a match in there. We see uh, Bob Hoskins. He and, must be um, 80 years old. He's dead. Uh, <laughs> He's dead. I didn't know. You could yeah, have he's been dead for ages. You could have broke that to me a bit. Mario's dead. <laughs> I assumed he was going to get the gig in the next Mario film. That's a he's real been dead blow. For a while. What did he die of? 
Uh, well, if you let me finish the story, <laughs> you'll find out. I don't know. No. <laughs> no, I don't know what he died of, to be honest. Is it old age? I don't know. Big Probably f- cancer. Long fall. Mm. Well, this is this is a film from the 80s, so it was all right then. Yeah. Or they could do so, him like uh, they did Roger Rabbit and have him as a cartoon Bob Hoskin. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be good. The, Roger the, Rabbit 3 would be really good if uh, the rabbit was a real rabbit, but, but the Bob Hoskins was animated. That'd be does the rabbit Does the rabbit talk? Yes, of course. Well, you've seen Roger Rabbit. Yeah, I know, but it's a real rabbit. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what you're not getting. <laughs> So we don't see the football match. Okay, we just see Ray Winston and Bob Hoskins. Like fucking yeah, yeah. That's Ray Winston. Yeah, right. They're getting really sort of sad. They go into the toilets in the thing. They get armor on. They get like, armor. Yeah. yeah. Okay. This is a proper war. Seventeen. BD Viking said he sorry. fell off a pla- rotating platform onto some spikes. <laughs> <laughs> Good. So the whole film is the battle. Yeah. So, well, that's Football Hooligan. It's really a war film. Except there's a lot of people calling each other cunts and <laughs> each other's mum's slaps. They call them muggy cunts, things like that. Yeah, you muggy cunt. That's said. Is there a lot of said Cockney rhymes? 47 though? times. Yeah. They, um, oh, the director watch insisted him. He's on going some up the stairs. apples and pears. <laughs> yeah, the director insisted on stairs. We've got to have a, a stair scene. Where's John? Then... Get him on the old dog. On the old dog a bone. Oh, my God. I've got claret all over me whistle. Yeah, the whole film is that. I can't remember. And they're, mess- they're texting each other, like emojis. So Hattie, at mid- go. Hattie Midnight, you toilet. <laughs> That's the thing they say, isn't it? I'll cut you up, mate. No, I can't. I'm from Dayton. Stripe and you. I can't I'll really stripe yep. you up. It would stripe be. you up proper, mate. Yeah. I'll bloody stripe him they up. Do. I they do. Um, what else do they say? They say uh half oh, a pound of pound of pound of strawberries. That doesn't, <laughs> yeah, he that's, gets involved. That's not at guy. all scary though, is it? Everybody's like, hey, it's fruity Bob. And he shows yeah, up. Yeah, it's called he's Fruity got, like, Bob a... because he's a really bad stereotype of a homosexual man. <laughs> <laughs> and he shows up with a crate of like rotten fruit. He's like, Is this any good to you, lads? Yeah, he loads it all. He was just trying yeah. to uh, de-escalate things from yeah. murderous intentions to fruit throwing. And then uh, another guy shows up. There's going to be oh, some uh... Barney. Hattie Midnight has really got some good dialogue here for you. Write this down because <laughs> you'll need this when you speak to her. There's going to be some Barney. Barney rubble trouble. Yeah, got that. Yeah. yeah. Let's have a Britney sp- a pig's ear. Oh, what's that? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Give, oh, it's just it's just it's give a ninety some minutes of, of that boat. We'll write this later, Ash. Yeah, yeah. We'll we don't, this need, to, later, we don't yeah. need to write it now. Don't need to. Let's get the outline. Ninety minutes of football hooligans killing each other. Yeah, Hoskins. What's the other guy's name? Winston. Ray Winston. Ray Winston. He calls himself Winstone, doesn't he? He's one of those. He'll say, "Yeah, it's he? Ray Winstone." He's pro- Ray Winston. He's pronouncing. Ray Winston. He's pronouncing every letter in that name. Ray Winstone. Yeah. You mug. You muggy cunt. You absolute mug. I'll stripe you up, you cunt. <laughs> <laughs> Bob Boskins is the Millwall leader. Ray Winston is the West Ham leader. At the end, uh, it pans out over a, a field or a car park full of corpses. And then just in the distance, you can see Ray Winston and Bob Hoskins kissing each other. <laughs> because and that's then, what like, it's all it, about. It cuts, to the, it cuts to the credits just as Ray Winston lays Bob down. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's what it's all yeah, about. Credits, I think yeah. football hooliganism is really genuine. Yeah, just they just want to have sex with each other. It must be something like that. I've been going to football for like 30 odd years. I've never seen any real trouble ever. But I think what it really would be is just people wanting to bum each other. That's why it was well, a thing in the 80s because like it wasn't so easy to be able to do that in the 80s. Now you can do it and bumming. there's much less problems, I think. With yeah. Um, yeah. So I think in the 80s it was much harder for them to be able to really get close up with each other. Like you said to me, uh, football hooliganism and football fans are two different people, aren't they, Ash? Yes. Did I ever say that? Yeah. 
do think that. Probably. You've, you've, you've sort of danced around it. I do dance around. I love football and dance. I'm like the opposite of a football hooligan. I'm a football interpretive dance fan. <laughs> it's West Side Story. It's this film. West Ham Side Story. Oh, there you go. Lovely bit of business. Um, okay, Beardy Viking. There's going to be an apple crumble on the pitch. Claret and Angie Bargy all over the place. Leave them in a proper two and eight. That's good. I like that. Two and eight. Very good. Yeah. Yeah. And that was the score of the match. Eight two. Yeah. To who, though? I don't know. West Ham? Well, you never know. I think that's the point. We never know. We never find out. It's two never and eight. find out. Okay. I enjoy two, uh, True Warriors. Are you ready for your final film yeah, of this be, evening? That'd be a good one. Let's hope so. Mad Crouching. <laughs> Mad. What is that? That's Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon, and Mad. Mad, mad, mad world, maybe? Don't know. I don't know. I can't help you with that. Crouching Tiger and Dragon, Mad. Mad Max. Mad Max, maybe. Aye, oh, maybe. Right. Uh, thank you, Max. Mad Crouching. Well, I don't know. I can't help we you. We can go that. for the obvious, can we? You do whatever you want. This is your show. This is nothing to do with me. I'm just a conduit for you to express yourself. I love that you've how laid back you've got. Now you know you're on your final one. It's like you've gone, the pressure's off. This could be anything. Well, I don't know. Look at this one. Fucking mad crouch and the pressure's not off yet. Look at him thinking. Um, right. I've done the mic. Oh, play, can I, can that... I best very, very quickly ask for the um, a tagline for True Warriors? I should have been asking for it. I'm not, yeah, I've not done uh, it for a while. So. Stitch this, you cunt. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I'm not sure it's going on the poster, but I like it. Well, the cunt will have an asterisk and then an asterisk. Really asterisk. Good. Really good. Mad crouching. That thing, that uh, True Warriors, going back again while you think, I'm covering for you. That is the film that absolutely would have got made at one point if it was pitched at the right time when they were making all those constant shit. They had the budget as well, though, because it's a it's an epic. But they would if someone had pitched that and gone, I've got Winstone, I've got Hoskins. This is just going to be the most amazing. He talks like this: the most amazing football hooligan fight you've ever seen. We've got seventeen thousand extras going at it in Asda car park in Beckton. Fruity Bob, Fruity Bob's in. We've got <laughs> some of the blokes from Lock Stock. Who's directing that, by the way? We'll see. It. Guy Ritchie, actually. I've Guy Ritchie. Mine. It's Guy Ritchie. Who did, did you say someone before? I said Mike Lee, but. Uh... Yeah, and they I'm would have made it. that film. Like, they made about eight Green Street hooligan films. Yeah, it is. Awful. Uh, anyway, Mad Crouching. Right, this is a sci-fi film. Mm. I say sci-fi, it's about 10 years in the future from now. So we're saying 2032. 2032. 20, the The country's gone to shit, right? The country's cut off from the world. Because of Boris, he's gone and fucked everything. No. And now we have a dictator. Well, I think we do already, am I right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Too wrong, <right>, mate. <laughs> Sorry about that. You said his name and it invoked that in you. Yeah, it did. So we have a dictator now because the government isn't working. It's not working. They decided, right, we're just going to have... Somebody just took over. Um, and this actor who takes over and is the big boss of this country... Uh, that's cut off from the rest of the world, is played by Jean-Claude Van Damme. Oh, lovely. But he's doing a Cockney so he's, accent. He's the dictator of Great Britain. Yeah, but he doesn't sound French in this film. Oh, how has he done he that then? Dutch. He's... <laughs> yeah. Well, he's he's dubbed over, I think. Oh, wow. Wowzers. Uh, Jean-Claude, we really want you to be in this, but we're going to get you dubbed over. Well, they needed a dictator who could do a roundhouse kick. Yeah, that's fair. Like yeah, Putin. But, uh, Putin can. Yeah. But they found out that, Jean, this is true, by the way, Jean-Claude Van Damme can't do roundhouse kicks anymore because he's ground his uh, ball joint to dust. 
That's true. Did you know that? No, I didn't. I mean, I've not even heard from him since he did that cause advert. He's done a documentary, and apparently people ask him to do roundhouse kicks all the time. He's like, I can't do it anymore. Um, no, he's not burnt hurt, but... but... Uh, was it? He can't do it because he's done it too much. Has he ground it to dust he's from the it, field? He's done it too much. So his hips are screwed. Why know, hasn't like... he had um hip replacement? Well, even if you have a hip replacement, I'm pretty sure you can't do roundhouse kicks. I don't know. No, I mean even if it's a re- even if it's a really good hip replacement, mm. automate automated or something. See, someone says Jean Claude Van Damme do a roundhouse kick. He presses a button. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so so John Cor Van Dam is the is a dictator, dictator of Great Britain. Futuristic Britain. Who's doing the voice of the guy? And what's his name? What's the name? Jeremy of the Jeremy Irons Jeremy is doing John Cor Van Dam's voice. Why have you chosen John Cor Van Dam then if he can't do a roundhouse kick? Well, because I was thinking of the roundhouse thing. Yeah, and I'm thinking he he has really bad knees. So um, yeah. <laughs> He has made it illegal to crouch in the UK. He's got but everybody, terrible joint issues. Terrible joint does, issues. Does. That's the life of karate, isn't it? I don't know. Yeah. Oh, trust me, I know. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so he, he, crouching is banned. And I was like, I don't give a fuck. I'm I'll bend them it. my back. I'll just bend them my back. And then, right, years down the line, Everybody's been bending with their back. They're all fucked. Yeah, because they say bend at the knees. You're right. I haven't even yeah. I haven't even thought about it. Yeah. So people start bending at the knees to pick up boxes. The second they do, he has special squadrons that, that sort of, you know, circle the town, circle the he villages. Would, he would. They shoot you, I'm sorry, if they see a, a knee bent. Oh my god. And they didn't think he'd enforce it, but he does. They go around just executing people. Yeah, and then he so is there comes some sort the... of resistance or? Yeah, there is. Well, what they do is they um they take you into these special sort of tents that they put up around towns. Yeah, and they they examine camps. your knees. Camps. Yeah, like camps, yeah. and everybody has to have a regular knee check, and they see if there's check any the muscle. Check the hair still on your knees. When I used, yeah, to play, well, they... I used to play lounge football and I would have bald knees all the time where the carpet had worn the hair off my knees. That's a telltale <laughs> well, sign. But more, a bit more scientific than that, Ash. Oh, yeah. They they check for, for knee muscles. Yeah. And if there's any kind of knee muscles that are formed, they know that you've been using your knees. This has really put pay to blowies, isn't it? Like, <laughs> they're a thing of the past. Well, he doesn't like them either. <laughs> <laughs> one of the... If you get if you get caught blowing someone, you get shot. Yeah, both in both senses. <laughs> well, there's a big list of things he doesn't want. Yeah, but it's just this one's about crouching. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And why is it called he... mad crouching? Yeah. Um, because at the end of the film, it's spoilers, no... it's no... everybody just everybody goes mental with it, and they just start crouching. Like, I mean, some so is, people is he just... overthrown? And that's why they can get away with it. He is overthrown. Do you know how he's overthrown? Is he thrown he over? Ha- has a big rally in an Asda car park. Oh, my God. Right. And he's standing at one end. Everybody else is standing, you know, standing up straight. He's standing up straight by his podium. Let's stand up straight. They, even though they've got terrible back pain. They get two trucks, one over here, one over here. They have a long piece of piano wire. Between the two trucks. Oh my god! You see where this is going? Yeah, I see where it's going. Yeah, All right. And then like, the the main guy who's played by uh, Ryan Philippe. <laughs> Don't know who that is. He he says, "Fuck you, Mister Dictator." What's We're the dictator's crouch. name? Can I have his actual name, please? The dictator. His name is Dictator. Dictator. Gator. Gator, because it's me, isn't yeah, it? Like alligator, yeah. Dick- dictator, gator, gator, gator. Okay, Not... I could do better. Yeah, I was going to say fun. that wasn't you. But I'm going to be honest. That's one of the worst things you've ever said. All right, dictator no. Maris Piper. Oh, for fuck's sake! Change it to Maris Piper. I'll write it down. That'll explain the little French twinge to his. 
hold on, it's Jeremy Irons. <laughs> Yeah, it's Jeremy well. Irons. We've paid Jeremy Irons to completely dub over Jean Claude Van Damme, and he hasn't even. We haven't used it. Well, he thought that they wanted an impression of Jean Claude yeah, Van Damme. That's where it went wrong. What a waste of time that he was. He could pull it off. If anyone could, it's Irons. Good. Hundred percent. Nobody's allowed to crouch anymore. I can't do his voice. Either. No, no. And there was no French. There was no twang to that at all. That was no. very similar to Alan Rickman. Potter, no, Potter, no. Um, Alan Rick no. was very much the dead Jeremy Irons. <laughs> do, you want, do you want me to finish the climactic scene? I mean, I really do. You've got to, really. So you've got the trucks going. Ryan Philippe's like, fuck you, man. But I mean, you know, we'll flesh it out. Fuck you, Piper. Yeah, I'm going to bend my knees. And then literally there's a, a whole crowd of clicks. They all, <laughs> they all bend. As they all bend, and he's like, "What are you doing? You can't bend. What are you doing?" This Fuck. is the best Shoot impression you've ever all. done. That's very good. Shoot them all! Shoot all the fuckers! Shoot them! <laughs> and then all the, the you know the guards are shooting them, but, <laughs> but they can only shoot up. At... So, yeah, you can only, only got so many bullets. Oh, and they're too high, I imagine. Yeah, well, no, they're all on the ground, but all the goodies are bent, and yeah. all the people. Yeah, yeah, are bent. I get it. I get it. The soldiers get it. are standing. John Close and these trucks come <laughs> driving along this <laughs> piano wire, super strong piano wire, chops them all off, chops all their heads off. Bloody all the ones hell. that refuse to bend their legs. Because, I mean, even when he saw that wire coming, holy shit. I will he saw not the wire bend. Coming. I will He's... not, yeah. And you see him go <gasps> right at the very end. And then his just... head comes off. And as it falls on the ground, he winks at everyone. <laughs> Why? Why does it? I don't know. That's just for people to read into. they got to sort of make their own meaning for that. And when's this film set? When did this go out? This is set in 2035. Oh, yeah. Oh, you said that. Sorry. Yeah. In the, it's in an Asda car park again. Are we using the same Asda car park as um, True Warriors? Just out of curiosity. Yeah. yeah. And you've gone it's back a bit, to... It's a big car park. You've just gone back to them. You've said, look, we've got another blockbuster. We want the car park. We can have the Asda logo in the background if they give us a discount on the... Uh, it'll have to be yeah. a Sunday when it's quiet, obviously, at the Asda. Yeah. I mean, it's the biggest supermarket car park in the country. Okay. Well, lovely bit of business there, Dan. Thank you very much. That is your final film. So now, yeah. viewer... What's the tagline? tagline? Oh, tagline to mad crouching, please. You you should be doing this job. It's not a job. Um. Oh, I thought you were saying that because you had one. No, I'm, I'm, I've got to think of one, but you, I thought you have to write it down. Oh, I do. I should do. Really, I've been very lax with my uh, questions here because you've been you've given so much colour already. It's a proper knees up. A no. proper knees up. No, you don't. Like no, that. Um, no, no. Uh, a nation. This is one of those long ones because it's okay. quite yep. philosophical. A nation. A nation. A nation. A nation. A, <laughs> a nation mourns. A nation mourns. Yeah. The bent knee. What? But one man called Ryan Philippe. Oh, he's going by his real nation. name. I can't yeah, well, write. Yeah. I'm not writing all this down. I started writing it down, but it's turned into a monologue. What? No. But one man will show a nation how to bend uh, the knees once more. Show the nation. Hold on. So a nation move it. What? A nation no yeah. longer bent at the knees. Okay, that's better. Under a No, no, I think you can leave it there. <laughs> I'll just go back to it as a proper knees up. That'll do. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I'm going to put that out, viewer. So, viewer, now is your time to vote, please, on your favourite film. You had Rambo Mission, Blonde Tiger, Lost Cobra, True Warriors, and Mad Crouching. I hope you remember what the real were. I know what my favourite is. It's a tough one for me. Yours is the first one. Isn't it, yeah, I absolutely loved it. So, that is out there now. You can vote on that. Please vote. And let us know. Message in the comments. What's your favourite? What was your favourite film as well? Um, and let us know any <laughs> if you've got any so, other ideas of what someone went for be. Blonde Tiger. Who the hell went for Blonde Tiger? Oh, you're seeing it in live action, are you seeing it? 
Oh, wow. wow. Yeah, Blonde Tiger, True Warriors. I'm, wow, I'm blown away by that. <laughs> I'm blown away by what's happening. This is... Is that your Christopher Walken impression there? Blown, wow! Wow! I'm blown away. Wow! This is not going as I thought it was going to go. The voting is it's incredible. Everyone vote. Come on. You've got no, what else no, you got to do? Nobody's going for Lost Cobra. No. That had, that had I the think it had fun. the best scene. It's one I think yeah. that's got one of the best scenes we've ever had on I've watched that. I genuinely I agree, do. Yeah. I think that scene where the P- podgy kids listening to his music. And 99 Red Balloons while all the yeah, great. Everyone, come on. There's there's plenty of viewers here. Just take the time, do the vote. Let's have this. Let's have this right. I want it to I want it to be a true reflection of that of this to see what the best film is that's good english wasn't it come on there we're halfway oh, it, through the vote there this there is you go. It, it got two votes for that sympathy but now yeah blonde opinion. tiger where it belongs currently Ooh. i think because that one actually i think blonde tiger is the one film that's gonna sort of stick with me because it upset me quite a lot <laughs> do you get the deciding vote if it's a draw uh, you do actually you're the guest. You yeah, get the deciding right. vote. Come on, guys. So there's just a few seconds remaining. Get yourself over there. Vote. If you haven't voted, you might as well. What else have you got to do in the next like 30 seconds other than vote on this? You might as well vote. It makes me feel better as well if you do. Definitely. Some great films there, though. Genuinely some great ones. Can I just say what an incredible internet connection you've got, Dan? Just, it's <laughs> really Thank, you. Thank you very much. Yeah, it's new. So while we wait, while we wait for this, Dan, tell the viewer. I know they're all your viewers as well. No one's coming to watch me; they're coming to watch you. But where can they find you? What are you doing? When are you on? Um, I'm on Twitch. Mm. Same as Ashriff's address, but take Ashriff off and put an atomical bomb. Mm, yes. And I'm on. Uh, I won't be on this Tuesday. I might be on this Tuesday actually, live from a pub. Oh, you're going to a pub? Well, I have a viewer from America that's coming back to to here apparently he's from chatham wow but he moved to america he's coming back tomorrow we're going out for lunch and possibly drinks and i'm supposed to be streaming tomorrow so we may stream from a pub oh my god if, if your heart stays are you right yeah. i'm fine it's just a wind from too much veg <laughs> oh i accidentally shut the pole down i've shut the pole down accidentally where's the it's a it's a three-way Hold on. Why have I shut it down? Why can't I see it? Why can't I see it? Don't spoil well, it. It's Rambo no Mission. Oh. No spoil. Do you want me to tell you? Well, why can't I see the fucking thing? I accidentally clicked on it and it disappeared. Where's my pole Welcome gone? To... Where's my pole? Where does it say Ashriff ran a pole? Do you need to see it or can I just read out the oh, three that can, won? But you know that's not the same. I want to see my pole. <laughs> if you look I want to see your pole. <laughs> Manage poll. There we go. View results. Oh, it's taken me completely off the thing. Right. So here we. Oh, it's a three-way tie. That's yeah. what you were going to say. With twenty-five percent, it's a split decision between Rambo Mission, True Warriors, and Mad Crouching. I just I couldn't believe that. <laughs> um. Knees up, well, Mother Brown said. Um, Hattie Midnight as a tagline. Ryan Philippe pulls up next to his body and says, "Poor Maris Piper, that's pissed on his chips." <laughs> <laughs> Good. True Warrior is a wholesome British classic, says uh, Positive Puppet. Well, um, I'm going to go for the Rambo. If I get to choose, I go for the Rambo one because it seemed like a, a had a lot of facets. And it I loved it. Nice. Christmas I film. absolutely loved it. I could I see imagine it you would come away sort of quite happy. Yeah, yeah. I think I'd, it's an uplifting film. Yeah, you, you give your kids a hug afterwards, wouldn't you? Um, yeah, and then we'd. I'd probably then buy like a Michael because obviously the soundtrack would be by those guys, and it'd be I a Christmas. Say I'd buy an FHM. <laughs> I'd buy an FHM and a nuts. <laughs> um, absolutely lovely, lovely, absolutely lovely. Thank you very much. That's great work if you are watching this and you haven't followed me follow me because there's another one coming up in two weeks it's, it's going to be with uh, Catherine Mather the brilliant stand-up comedian mm-hmm. and um and if you know of someone that you think would be good for this then just tell me and tell them I think I, I, I've got a few people that I think might be quite good at it yeah but it's scary because I don't know if other people 
want to do it. I find it very difficult. I'll get you at least one guest. Oh, thanks. That's great. Uh, and if you're watching, tap people up. I think it's a good idea. It's a good idea. It's been proven to be a good idea by Dan just then. Um, Dan, thank you very, very much for thank your time. You. Thank you for your films. I think they've been brilliant. And if you uh, enjoyed watching this, you can also listen to it as a podcast. It'll probably be up tomorrow. That's the kind of speed I work at. And this one you'll be able to listen to. Um, <laughs> but I think we should raid someone. What do you think? Did you actually put the other podcast up? Yes, I did. Yeah, people, lots of people tell me how good it was. That's what I told you. Even though it sounded like an Android. It sounded like an Android. People love that. People Underwater. love terrible quality audio. <laughs> um Beardy Viking says, True Warriors would be like Lord of the Rings, fueled by Embassy Number One and Tenant Super. Definitely <laughs> true. Um, these are always bloody good fun. Thank you very much, Beardy Viking. Thank you, Hattie uh, Midnight, for the follow. Thank you, Batters, for the subscription. And uh, Nook of the Nook, thank you for the follow as well. Um, if you've got, now is the time, if you've got anything else you want to say about this episode of Night, I'd watch that. Now is the time to say it because I'm going to go and raid someone right now. And I'll be back. I think I might be back tomorrow with the boy. Uh, we might be playing something together. The boy. On the boy. The boy. I'm going to try. Hopefully, I'll be back a bit more regular now. Um, let's hope so, anyway. That would be good. And tomorrow, hopefully, with the boy be great so who's on is there anyone that people want me well, to raid the person i was going to suggest you inviting on is on now bite my thumb oh yes i like bite my thumb Steve. i reckon it, he'd be up for doing it bite my he'd be good on it as well wouldn't he yeah bite not better thumb. than me but you know we're gonna go over to bite my thumb i don't know what he's doing right now it looks like a quiz show it is a quiz show oh, yeah. i like that let's go over to bite my thumb Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Dan, so much. Thank you. Two weeks. Put it in your diary. Catherine Mather is on. We've got some great guests coming up. And I think we might be going slightly more regular with it. I'm not entirely sure. I think we're going to definitely have the every other week. And then I think we might slip in a few little special guests at other times. I know that regularity is a key, but I think it might be good to squeeze some other people on. I'll be back tomorrow, hopefully, with the boy. Dan will be back tomorrow from the pub. Off his tits. Possibly, possibly. Uh, let's go and raid Bite My Thumb. Say hello from me, and I'll see you all very, very soon. Thank you for being there. And let's all just remember the tagline to Rambo Mission, which was... I didn't ask you for one, Dan. Could you just quickly give us one to sign off? Uh, jingle balls. Absolutely perfect. Thank you very much. Let's raid. It's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you. You've got six... Five, four, three, two, one, let's raid! <laughs>